Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome all of you to this 61st Independence Anniversary celebration of Ghana. And let him welcome, especially too, from Ghana, the presiding bishop and about six bishops of the Methodist Church, Ghana, that is here on a very special visit to honor the missionaries who helped set up the Methodist Church in Ghana some 180 years ago. It is a pleasure to have you, Most Reverend Titus Awachi Pratt. Last year, unfortunately, I did not arrive in London in good time to host you during the 60th independent anniversary celebration. But I must say that I'm happy to be here at this particular time. As a country, we are proud of the progress that we have made. We can now say that we are a peaceful and stable multi-party constitutional democracy. Since 1992, when Ghana decided to build a future based on democracy, it has not looked back. We have had six fiercely contested elections where on three occasions we have had changes in government from opposition to government. And the last one was just uh, December 2016 when the people of Ghana elected a new government under the leadership of His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. And I'm honored to have been appointed by the President to be Ghana's representative to the Court of St. James's. Since the government of President Akufuado took office last year, January, it has begun honoring major pledges that he made to Ghanaian people. And the last academic year commencing September 2017 saw the commencement of a free secondary school policy which had an additional 90,000 students gaining access to secondary education. Overall, investment in education continues to take the biggest slice of our national budget, about some 20 percent, when I also see the minister responsible for higher education in Ghana, Professor Kwesi Yanka, here. Prof, you're welcome. <laughs> to create a workforce that meets our country's long-term needs. We are also reforming our school's curricula to place greater emphasis on science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and also technical and vocational skills. The government has made the creation of jobs and self-employment opportunities for the youth a key multi-sector priority. And among some of the initiatives taken in this regard is the establishment of the Nation Builders Corps. And as the President announced in his address this morning in Ghana, this year, hope to employ 100,000 young people to assist the delivery of public services in the areas of health, education, sanitation, 
and agriculture, as well as boost the efforts of the Ghana Revenue Authority in collecting taxes. Other youth-focused job creation and self-employment promotion initiatives introduced since 2017 include, among others, planting for food and jobs and digital marketing and entrepreneurship programs. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the President of Ghana has articulated a very bold vision of a Ghana beyond aid. And last November, he was here to deliver a paper on Africa beyond aid. Africa, blessed with natural and human resources, such that <laughs> as a continent, by this time, we should have been able to end our dependence on foreign aid in our national budget and expenditures if we are to have the right mix of leadership, planning, and prudent management and use of its resources. Ghana Beyond Aid does not mean that Ghana does not accept aid or not request aid. What it means is that, as a country, we should ensure that we are able to raise enough resources by ourselves locally to implement our development agenda. And as the President often says, no one should expect someone from another country to come and build their country for them. A Ghana Beyond Aid involves us actively mobilizing our human and financial resources, both home and in the diaspora, towards achieving a common national goal. It involves mobilizing and leveraging domestic savings and revenues transparently with resolute efficiency and accountability. Government has therefore embarked on a campaign to build a new ethic and culture of tax responsibility and compliance among Ghanaians, while at the same time it's modernizing and boosting the tax collection capacity to generate more revenue to meet our development needs. Most importantly, government has also stepped up its effort to curb corruption and waste in public administration. An independent office of special prosecutor has been established by an act of parliament with bipartisan support, with the office being assured of the requisite tools and resources to give dedicated attention to investigating and prosecuting cases of corruption by public office holders, including past and present politicians, and recovering the proceeds of corruption. The Auditor General's Office has also been encouraged to exercise its power of imposing and enforcing surcharges against public officials who are found in the course of an audit to have made unauthorized expenditures. Ghana Beyond Aid means Ghana is open for business. Government continues to implement measures to stabilize and improve the macroeconomic environment for business and investment. Already, the fiscal deposit deficit has been brought down from 9.3 as of December 2016 to 5.6% of our GDP as of December 2017. 
and government continues work to reduce it further. Interest rates, which hovered around 25% in late 2016, is about 10.5% as of last month. Last year, 2017, the Ghanaian economy grew by 7.9% from a rate of 3.6% in 2016. Ghana is indeed open for business. And we welcome all who wish to take advantage of the immense opportunities for business and investment that our nation offers. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, when we say we are open for business, it's not only foreign direct investment. The invitation is also to our Ghanaian compatriots who have now made their home outside Ghana, including those of you in the United Kingdom. And since assuming duty as High Commissioner, as I have traveled across the length and breadth of the United Kingdom to engage with many different Ghanaian communities, I've come to appreciate the significant strides Ghanaians are making in the United Kingdom. Of course, we have a lord in the House of Lords of Ghanaian descent. And in the House of Commons, we have three members who are of Ghanaian descent, one of whose mother is here. And we applaud them. Indeed, for the past few years, almost every year, in the Queen's Honours List, you have British citizens of Ghanaian descent receiving honours. And some of them are here. And just last year, in June, when I went to present my letters of credence to Buckingham Palace, Her Majesty the Queen herself introduced to me the first black equerry of the Queen, I think Major Chumisi Ankara, a British citizen of Ghanaian descent. But in a quest to have a Ghana beyond aid. Government is putting in place policies that will convert financial remittances to Ghana into development capital. Instead of sending monies to our families and our communities, let the money be available for investment to provide jobs employment for our young, young people. But government recognizes the substantial contribution that diasporas make to our country. The regular remittances you send to your loved ones and your families go a very long way indeed. Not only to them, but the economy as a whole. And your contribution also goes beyond these remittances because your skills acquired outside the country should be used to support the new Ghanaian agenda. As I say, at the time when we were fighting for political independence, many of those who led the independence struggle could be described as diasporas. However, now, if you look at the range of skills that diasporas have acquired, if we were to use the same commitment that our forebears had in fighting independence into contributing to the economy, Ghana beyond aid, and Africa beyond aid will be achievable. As a country, 
we work to deepen our democracy. And we work even to deepen our democracy to let mayors be directly elected, not appointed by government. Our host country, the United Kingdom, has been great support. In our democracy, and also in our economy. And the UK is Ghana's great biggest trade partner. The UK has also remained the most consistent and largest partner in the area of trade and economic relations. And it is our hope that in moving Ghana beyond aid, our ties in this area will continue to thrive and grow to our mutual benefit. However, emphasize the point made by Rob, in our desire to move Ghana beyond it, we call for more UK private sector investment, particularly in the area of infrastructure, agriculture, and ICT. Emphasis is also on partnerships and joint ventures which involve skill and technological transfer from the UK to Ghana. It is now my pleasure to invite you to lift your glasses and drink lustily with me. <laughs> Toast to the Queen and the United Kingdom and the strengthening of bilateral relations between the United Kingdom and Ghana. Yeah.